Thank you, Father, for your <clears throat> introduction. It's a real privilege to be present with you and uh, on this very, very important occasion. I'm speaking about the future of minorities in, uh, in UK and Pakistan. A striking feature of the Bible is that hope and salvation and new beginnings almost always comes from the margins, from what we might today call minority groups. You think of King David, who came from the unpopular, shunned tribe of Judah. Or we think of Joseph, who was an Israelite slave in Egypt, who rose to greatness and saved Israel in a time of famine. Or we think of Jesus himself, who came from lowly Bethlehem. And then Jesus focused his ministry on the minority. He spent his time with the disabled, the poor, the sinful. God's way is to place the minority at the center. God's way is to reach out to those who are marginalized or on the edges and to place them at the center. And yet, that biblical principle is in stark contrast in the, both the UK and Pakistan and so many other parts of the world where the powerful so often use their power to oppress minorities rather than to liberate them. I was uh, lucky and privileged to attend a short vigil at the Reverend Sarah Gill's parish in Blackburn on Sunday night where she showed the horrible graphic images of the destruction of churches in Juranwala. It was hard not to be reminded of Kristallnacht in Nazi Germany and the oppression of the Jewish minority, or so many image, other images like that that we've seen through history. And it's so good that here we stand together in condemning such atrocities. But let's be honest about what happened. A great deal of the persecution of Christians in Pakistan is within the blasphemy laws. The majority are using their power over the law to oppress the minority, the precise opposite of what we see in the scriptures. I'd love to think that things are different in this country, but if people in the United Kingdom are to comment on the splinter in the eye of the other, they must first remove the log from their own eye. All too often in the UK also, the majority use the law to oppress the minority. Let me give you one or two examples. We might think about asylum seekers and immigrants who face such appalling abuse and loss of dignity because of UK law. Or we might think of the traveller community in this country who under the police and crime bill can face police action simply for owning a caravan and being near a field. Many also are concerned that the Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Act of 2022 makes life easier for those who are, have wealth or in work, but deeply impacts minority groups. In the UK too, we need to put our hands up and accept that we too are guilty of abusing power in a way that oppresses minorities. And I think this raises for us a big question. What is power for? In the life of Jesus, we see someone who used their power to give power away. Constantly in the Gospels, Jesus empowers the minority such that they're placed back at the very centre of the community. Until those in power in the United Kingdom and in Pakistan wake up and realise that they have power in order to give power away, we'll continue to see minorities oppressed. With power comes responsibility. With power comes a duty to protect and liberate minority groups. It's critical that we learn to use power in the way that Jesus used power, so that all might know the freedom which should be theirs as beautiful, precious children of God. Thank you.